Okay. Um, I see you're all grabbing a drink, so please do that. And then if you have one, maybe move over to the middle or the left side where there's more space so you can properly see uh, all the important closing thoughts that we will share with you. So basically grab a drink uh, and move to the other side or sit down, whatever you prefer. Okay, the good news is you can grab a drink for this talk. The bad news is you need to listen for another 20 minutes, okay? And this time you really need to listen. And you need to listen and you also need to remain calm. So if you just grab your drink, walk in, take a seat and respect the speakers. Respect us. <laughs> us. Please. Please. Flix blocks. There's a lot of noise coming from the right hand side maybe. Do we have some volunteers there? I thought there was the quiet police. Yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I find the uh, decentralized clicker. police. <laughs> okay, where's the clicker? Where's the clicker? Stage manager. Oh. Please. Okay, who's managing the stage? <laughs> clicker? Oh, I'm so sorry. Ah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, this is the closing ceremony. Okay, while the last people are flowing in, uh, we would like to um, take some minutes and talk about what happened today and reflect upon it and also give some insights. Um, so we are doing PowerPoint karaoke now. Do I start or do are you starting? I think you start. Oh, shit. Or do I start? I, I can do that one. Uh, also, full transparency, the slides were produced yesterday. Oh, no, actually today at like <laughs> half past midnight. So whatever we will say now stays between us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess everything that's on that slide has already been said. Uh, now we will share um, insights be behind basically why are we doing that event in the setup as we did today. Um, we're also really curious to hear if you enjoyed it or not. Please uh, grab us after this talk and let us know your thoughts, uh, critique, uh, improvement ideas, whatever. Uh, we also want to create a little bit of transparency around our finances, so give you some insights into what it costs to organize such an event and uh, where did we get the money from to do this event, because there's no sponsors here or no logos, etc. And um, a couple of closing thoughts and maybe even a closing announcement. I love how we manage the slide without reading the abstract. So. First things first, or last things last, last but not least, uh, so thank you all for joining us uh, at Protocol Berg. Um, this, you, you know this applause is for you because organizing a conference is a lot of fun, but it, it's more fun if actually people come and uh, listen to you talking. and. Uh, <laughs> Um. Yeah, and I think I take over this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it really felt like a big family reunion. Um, I think we have seen a lot of people here who uh, initially maybe all or many of them worked on Ethereum and now working on various different projects. And uh, yeah, it was awesome to see you all. I yeah, give a huge thank you to all the speakers who were open to this concept and uh, shared their knowledge, their problems, their insights uh, without yeah, thinking twice, I guess, whether this is an interesting mix of ecosystems. And that was great. So why did we set it up in the way that we did as a donation-backed, sponsorless, non-profit event that is free to attend. I hope all of you did not pay anything for your ticket and did not, I don't know, get one on the secondary market or I don't know what. <laughs> um, yeah, we did this mostly to stay credibly neutral. It's a difficult term, but for us it just means, ooh, uh, for us it just means, yeah, that we can do what we want, right? And that we can do so in a way that we think is um, fairly neutral, so basically not having talks that we think go into a too strong marketing direction, etc. And um, yeah, from, from our side, being able to judge which, which talk should be displayed here and what not. Uh, also, we see this conference as a common good, 
and we want to maybe think a little bit bigger and set an example and maybe others will do the same and I'm sure others are already doing the same in, in different formats as well. Uh, our goal was definitely to, to focus on the tech but really focus on the tech, not just say it. And I think that was kind of successful because I saw many, many, many builders here, uh, little to no networking or business development, um, and that was really great. So I think we all uh, could share or learn something today. And then, of course, why is it free to attend? So for us, this is something not new. The Department of Decentralization only organizes events that are free to attend or donation-based. Um, we do that because we believe that it's uh, really important to be inclusive and not um, yeah, pin this uh, education or content or whatever we do here or experience to a certain price point. Um, so I know there's also other methods like um, reduce student tickets or applying for something, but I think it, sh it should be the other way around. So it should be free by default, and if you like what you have seen today, maybe there will be another slide where you get the chance to spend some money. Um, yeah, so all get a drink and get your wallets ready. <laughs> but uh, no, we really like, like no strings attached. It, nobody is forced to pay anything here. Uh, we really want to have people from all backgrounds here, and that includes, includes of course, all financial backgrounds. Uh, I think the next point I've already briefly mentioned, this content-first curation, so no curation based on um, what projects or companies or stakeholders might want to see in this event, but really what we would want to see in this event. And by we, I mean um, mostly our DoD core team that try to um, think how the audience might think. So we really designed a conference for what we would want to attend. Um, and yeah, of course, our passion, bring people together with the right mindset and intentions and create a breeding ground for new ideas. Um, maybe you have already seen that at the one or the other East Berlin as well. So this is just what makes us happy. This is my cue. Click. <laughs> And, oh yeah, I have another one. <laughs> no sponsors, why? I have a little uh, meme here. I hope it's uh, somewhat readable. But basically, um, this all boils down to this transactional relationship between, um, speak, uh, between speakers, between sponsors and uh, event organizers that we don't really appreciate. And this is really no shade against our previous sponsors. We, we love you. And uh, I mean, everybody who has supported East Berlin uh, in the past and may do so in the future, thank you so much. You are also part of making possible what we do. So this is not against our sponsors or any sponsor per se, but really about this relationship that um, unfortunately uh, is created when you enter into this uh, transactional relationship. And in the meme, I'm just going to read it out so that everybody can see it. Uh, basically, for us, always feels like bargaining, right? So we say, oh, um, we need 5,000 euros. Can maybe somebody help us? And then the, the sponsors say, yeah, sure. I mean, give me a sponsor booth, attendee data, tickets, exposure, uh, social media outreach, logos everywhere, speaking slots, eternal gratitude, and maybe as a cherry on top, also a kidney of a core organizer. Is that OK? Um, yeah, so you could probably tell why we don't really like that so much, but sometimes it's necessary, of course. But yeah, with Proto Kohlberg, the idea was Let's really go hardcore and see how far we can go. Let's go without sponsors. And yeah, we wanted no logo presence, no tickets, no sponsor booths, no sponsor swag in bags, no marketing, and all this stuff that annoys us personally at most events. And this doesn't necessarily mean we will not work with sponsors in future events. Um, at the end of the day, we cannot escape this uh, system, and these events cost money. So there will be some, some degree of sponsorships in future events, for sure. Uh, our idea here is that we ne renegotiate the terms. And I think it's looking at other events, not all events, but some events in the space, especially in the crypto ecosystem, it sometimes feels it's gotten out of hand. Right, and um, that's why we try to push the boundaries today with uh, this event without having yeah, any Yeah, so if you want to see it as a scale or as a balance, we feel like the balance has really shifted towards one extreme and we needed to push it hard to the other extreme so that it arrives at the middle again. <laughs> Thank you. 
I put a, a tweet from my friend Renee here. Shout out to Renee, who also gave a workshop today, uh, and she's a developer. And she wanted to have a conference for developers, and she also wanted to have a conference where she doesn't hate everyone. <laughs> so basically, we tried to make that happen. Uh, I don't know where you are, but I hope it did happen. Um, and yeah, of course, it's a, it's a huge goal to say, oh, yeah, we're trying to organize a conference that doesn't suck. I mean, you tell us afterwards how it was, but yeah, we're just giving it a shot. Yeah, if you see Renee, just tell her. Okay, uh, this question has been uh, coming up all day, and I said, just come to the closing ceremony, we'll talk about this. Um, what's, what's, what's it like to organize a conference like this? What does it cost? And um, we'll just give you an idea that our rough budget for this conference was 100k euro. Um, and this includes everything, the venue, um, the food you had. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Berlin kebab and currywurst, um, but also all the stuff and you name it. And also one free aperitif or, or beer because we wanted to treat ourselves. So please also treat Cheers. yourselves at the bar if you didn't yet. But yeah, uh, bottom line, the stuff is expensive to organize and we are not um, pretending that you couldn't maybe also have done it for 80K. This, of course, heavily depends on venue, on, on how uh, professional the production should be, etc., etc. But I think these, these things, they are interdependent, right? So we want to make an event that is good and that you guys enjoy. And the, the aim is not to make the cheapest event possible, but again, to find the balance that this event is uh, enjoyable, that you all want to stick around for, I don't know, 10 hours or how long you've been here now, and uh, that, we, that we still um, can sleep at night and don't think we spend too much money. So that's the rough balance. But now let's look at uh, the other side. No, just to be transparent first, uh, we, our initial budget was much lower, but in the end we decided to, it's just better to have some perks like a free food truck outside because it's a very long day and um, uh, we just thought it's, it's worth it to have it. And um, as Francis said, we can push the number, but at some point, uh, is it really worth attending such a conference, right? So we are at roughly 100K here. Um, how did we finance this? So um, we reached out to various ecosystems because we invited them all to speak, come here, enjoy this uh, experience, and share your, um, share your knowledge, share your uh, progress. We got, uh, we were able to convince the Ethereum Foundation, but also the Pocket of Treasury to give us uh, 10,000 euro each, which is uh, really great, and we are really grateful for it. Um, but, um, and we also... Just to add, they both went uh, a big step into our direction with this, because I think for both it's unusual to fund a conference where they don't know who else is speaking or what else will the topics be, and there was a lot of curiosity around oh, why mix these ecosystems, etc. So that was really great that they both, in, the, uh, in that case, trusted us. Um, and it certainly helped that we, are, as a department of decentralization, are kind of connected with these ecosystems. We also re received uh, smaller community donations, but um, if we have done the math already, you see there's a huge big minus on our balance. We are at, at negative 78,000 euros with this event. Um, but yeah, no strings attached for that money. So I think that is already nice. They really... They really went in with us in that direction, right? No logo, no nothing. That was certainly new and nice that they trusted us. Thank you, EF and Polkadot. Yes, th thank you for everyone who donated. You see we are where we are getting at. <laughs> who, who here enjoyed this event? Okay, there are some hands. I see some hands. Okay, um, if you did the math and you say, okay, guys, but this is not sustainable. Uh, yeah, we agree. <laughs> it is not. Um, we, we try to foster this. We really want to see this happening again, and we really want to see if we maybe can also get retroactive donations for this. So if you have something to spare, if you know someone who could kick off a grants process for us to like retroactively fund what we did today. Um, 
please send them our way. We have a donation for us all over the venue, but we also have a website where you can donate uh, through other means. And there was a good question coming in from the side. A few asked um, if it's possible to donate via other chains. So for that, I would probably refer you to our website, but specifically asking about Gnosis chain and a couple of other chains. Polygon, do we have anything set up? Or is this a multisig and you should not? Uh, we don't have ENS set up on all this, but just, just check out our website. And there is a process for donations through other chains. And the website is protocol.berlin. Yes. I hope you know that by now. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, uh, thank you all for who donated and who will donate in future. Uh, we want to do this again. I think we enjoyed doing this. Uh, if we have the money, we would probably do it again. We don't know. But now we also want to give another huge shout out. So because of course begs the question, how do you organize event that is 70k or 80k in the minus? Well, uh, we had a really surprising support at the beginning of this year um, from the Optimism Retroactive Grants Funding. I think we were number one community and education project, if I remember the category uh, right, and that was mainly going uh, towards our contributions with Girly Testnet. And if you've been around for a while, you may also remember our Girly Con that we organized to launch the Girly Testnet in 2019, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, we received 200, roughly 280K from the Optimism Retroactive Goods Funding. That is just absolutely <laughs> blowing us away. You, you cannot imagine, uh, we, we didn't believe it. Like when we shared it in the team chat, we did not believe this number. We did not believe what we were seeing, but it was true. So that is just huge for us. And I'm going to try to, to explain briefly what we are doing with the money so that this is also transparent. So first of all, uh, some of the money is obviously has been going into protocol work because you have seen it's um, yeah, at a minus right now. Uh, but this also gives us uh, really some lag way for ETH Berlin 2024. And of course, also for other Department of Decentralization initiatives that are coming in the future, be it, I don't know, test nets, more education, etc. Um, but yeah, even though this number now seems big, you don't want to know what the ETH Berlin budget is. <laughs> so this will not um, carry us for forever, but it's certainly amazing. Again, we were blown away. Thank you so much to the Optimism batch holders and Optimism for even creating this and doing this experiment. And yeah, protocol work in this setup would not have been possible without you. Thank you. So if you ever wondered, is retroactive funding a good thing? Is it rewarding? Does it work? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it would have not also not been possible without yes, our core team. And it's uh, Helena and Ligi and Khan and Jacob. Just please come to the stage. And Martin, Martin uh, Alex. Alex. Please come to the stage. We cannot be here today. Come on. As I mentioned in the beginning, hmm? none of these gentlemen and gentle ladies <laughs> earn anything for this. <laughs> so we all did this um, for free on our uh, free time. Uh, nobody earns a penny with this. It's all passion from these individuals here. Thank you so much, guys. No, 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 no. Stay, no. stay, stay, stay. It's not yeah. over yet. Stay, stay. It's not over yet. <laughs> we need you. We need you for the next slide. Click. Because we're not done here. Yeah. And we will be back. Soon. Mark your calendars for, who will guess? ETH Berlin 2024. It's going to happen in May 24 to 26.
And yes. with that, yes. Yes. we arrived at the end uh, of our presentation, almost. 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 Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, if by this point you still didn't grab a celebratory drink, um, alcohol-free beer, beer, uh, a grape rosé, or um, just lemonade or water, whatever floats your boat, uh, feel free to do so at the bar and enjoy the rest of the evening. This venue will be open until 9 p.m. for you, only on the basement, please, because we will try to wrap everything else up. Um, use the opportunity to talk to attendees without us shushing you. Um, and if you are looking for more evening activities, there's an after party, an inofficial, inofficial after party, because of course we didn't have any money to organize an after party, but there are other nice people who like to organize parties, and uh, yeah, there's an unofficial after party happening at uh, Prince Charles. It's also in Kreuzberg, uh, basically around the corner. Starts at 10. There are these QR codes and posters. For example, there's one where you can scan the QR code and you can sign up. Uh, password is hack the planet, but I'm, I think it's also on the QR code. And an information for every volunteer, core team member, and speaker, you are already on the guest list and you do not need to sign up. I hope to see many of you there. Yes, uh, me too. I'm not going, but uh, enjoy. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, before we close this, um, and if you also believe this was a really smooth event, then it was because we had an amazing team of volunteers who like exactly knew what to do, and it was really, really great how everything worked out today with, with, with every helping hand we had. So, round of applause for all the volunteers. Please come on stage. Volunteers, please come please up. Come up. Please come up. Everybody with a red shirt. Please come to the stage. And we make our group photo, yeah. <laughs> Assemble for a group photo. <laughs>